When you work or exercise in the heat, you know that you tire more quickly on hot days. Research has shown that even world-class marathon runners see their performances decrease as the temperature increases. Even worse, if we overexert ourselves in high heat, we can suffer from heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Electronic systems are not much different. As we will learn today, incorporating intelligent temperature monitoring into solid-state relays can improve the performance, safety, and operating life of industrial systems. Welcome to Tech Chat, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, where we chat with engineering experts about the latest technical innovations that are shaping and reshaping our world. Today, we welcome Jesus Miranda, a product manager at Sensata, working with their Crytem brand Solid State Relays. Welcome to Tech Chat, Jesus. Thank you, Dale. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. So what are you going to be teaching us about in today's Tech Chat? So this presentation today, it's about how integrated thermal protection can be used in solid state relays and how it can help to prevent some failures in industrial systems. Well, I'm excited to learn more about it. So let's get started. Okay, so solid state relays are a very robust type of electronic switching solutions. They can be used in a lot of many different applications for switching many different types of loads. And they have a lot of advantages over your traditional electromechanical switching solutions. So solid state relays have been around since the 1970s. And they are a proven solution, and they provide more durability and more flexibility than the typical electromechanical relays. So new to this type of devices, there are some trends where integrated thermal protection can be added into these devices to prevent overheating and to improve the reliability and the efficiency of the systems. Can you give us a little background on solid-state relays? Of course, Dale. So... Solid state relays are electronic switches. They are made up of solid state components, basically semiconductors. Uh, there are no moving parts in this solid state relays. So by comparison, you can take a look at an electromechanical relay, which is like the more common type of relay that you will find out there. So electromechanical relays typically consist of a mechanical switch that is turned on by magnetically moving a metal or a contact to close a circuit and thus allowing the circuit to uh, the current to flow through the circuit. The SSRs, on the other hand, they use solid state components that are electronically actuated to complete this electrical circuit in a very similar manner to the uh, electromechanical relays. But in this case, there are no moving parts involved, only semiconductors. That's the one that allowed the current to flow or to start flowing in, in the circuit. So this then would be similar to, we've seen the evolution of the moving physical hard disk drives, but now it's all solid state memory in most of our computers. And so it's getting away from those physically moving parts. That is correct. That is a very good analogy. In that case, the, uh, the technology that is solid state, generally it's faster, it's more durable. And in many cases, actually, in, in, in that particular case that you mentioned, actually help us to go into more compact devices. In this case, we're still not there yet, but the evolution on the semiconductor devices might take us in that same direction. So there are many advantages of using solid state switching technology. So for more than 150 years, electromechanical relays have been in the market and they're still the most widespread type of devices that you will find out there for switching solutions. However, in the last 30 plus years, solid state relays have taken a great deal of the market share in terms of switching devices. As we mentioned before, there are significant differences between the EMRs, which are the electromechanical relays, and the SSRs, which are the solid state relays, especially in terms of the lifespan. So electromechanical relays are mechanically based and they have moving parts. So they are highly susceptible to some external disturbances such as magnetic noise, vibration, shock, and other effects that can basically affect the, the life cycle of these devices. In contrast, solid state relays are more durable because they are all solid state on their construction with no moving parts that will affect their durability or their accuracy. So they have a more predictable operation and they have a longer lifespan. So there are certain significant advantages that you'll find on, on solid state relays. One that is the most significant when you look and compare this type of devices is the life expectancy or the lifespan of these devices. So typically for electromechanical relays, 
you'll find that they are in the range of 100,000 cycles compared to more than 5 million cycles for the solid state relays. So with such extended durability, generally solid state relays outlast the equipment in which they are installed. And this is preferring certain type of, uh, of applications where you don't want to be affected by having to change your relays every certain amount of time. So in addition to a longer lifespan, the solid relays provide greater reliability and they provide cost savings when it comes in to the replacement of these devices because you have to replace them less times. Additionally to that, they provide faster switching than the EMRs. So that makes them more adaptable to a wider range of high power load applications. Basically, there are certain applications where you might want to switch your device more often that will affect the durability of the device that you're using. And in those cases, SSRs are a, an ideal solution. Also, they operate silently because they don't have any moving parts. They don't do any sounds. They don't do the clicking sounds that you will find in the electromechanical relays. And they have a low power consumption, which makes them suitable to use with low power devices and produces very little electrical interference. So the example here, you're talking about the faster switching and adaptable to a wider range of high power load applications is one of those examples I think I've been hearing about is switching at like at zero voltage where they're trying to time the switch when the voltage in an AC cycle is the lowest to minimize some of the disturbance. Is SSR is kind of enabling that? Yes. So the zero cross function is one of the key aspects of solid state relays. It's something that you cannot implement correctly when electromechanical relay. And the advantage of that is mainly that it produces less electrical noise during the switching because you're switching when your voltage is very close to zero. And that's actually ideal when you're switching certain type of loads like heaters, for example. So zero cross is the preferred type of switching for certain devices and is something that the SSRs are perfectly adept to do it. Excellent. Thank you for that explanation. And there are actually many more advantages of using solid state relays. One of the uh, advantages is that they are more resistant to shock and vibration, so they can withstand these harsh environments and continue to operate accurately and reliably. Whereas electromechanical relays might need replacement, so that makes them undesirable for certain conditions. In addition to that, solid relays are more compatible with control systems because of their low power consumption on the input side. They are more immune to magnetic noise and they are better encapsulated in general to protect critical components. Also, the solid state design makes them position insensitive and provides the design engineers with more flexibility on how they mount the SSRs. There are some older type of technologies, mainly some larger type of contactors, that you could not place them in certain positions. You have to place them in a certain orientation. In the case of solid state relays, that is not an issue. So you can mount them basically in whatever way you want to mount them in your control panel. And also they can be installed in places where there is a heavy vibration with basically no interference to their performance. Whereas the mechanical based relays are more sensitive to positioning, to shock and vibration. So that restricts the different design options that, that you might have. Now, Jesus, based upon these last couple of slides, you know, it looks like SSRs kind of solve all the problems you'd have. But, you know, you kind of said in the introduction, you're going to talk about some thermal issues. So can you tell us about what those might be? Yeah, so, so that's one of the things. Solid state relays, as you can see, have many advantages over their electromechanical parts, but they are also a little bit misunderstood. Solid state relays, uh, as we mentioned, are basically semiconductor based. And semiconductors are not perfect conductors. That means that when a certain current is flowing through the semiconductor, there is a, a heating component that you have to address. That's what you'll find with most electronic devices. They heat when they are operating, and that's because they use a lot of semiconductors. And when you have a system that it's made of semiconductors, you have to find a way to manage that heat so the system doesn't overheat and then that could cause a, a premature failure. 
as we mentioned, the SSRs generate heat when they are conducting, similar to what you will find in the in the motors that they actuate or the lamps that are actuated with these devices. So if an overheating occurs, that could cause the SSR to get damaged and that could cause costly downtimes on your system. So when the SSR turns on, internal heat is generated, as we explained, and that's why generally we need to use some sort of heat sinking to properly dissipate the heat generated by the relay. So depending on the relay and the size, sometimes that uh, heat sinking is actually integrated into the package of the SSR, but depending on the size, when you start going into higher currents, you might need to provide the heat sink separately. So that's one of the things that have to be kept in mind whenever you use solid state relays, that you might need to consider an external heat sink or maybe the use of uh, an external way of forcing air into the solid state relay so you can maintain the temperature limits under control. So even when the heat sink is utilized, there can be some external conditions that could cause the SSR to operate it outside of its recommended temperature limits. So the failure to protect the solid state relays in these conditions can cause the damage to the relay or to the device that is being actuated by the solid state relay. So one of the possible ways that you can address the overheating on the solid state relays is to actually integrate a thermostat into the SSR itself to ensure that the relay always operates in a safe and protected mode. So this type of modified design will prevent the SSR from overheating and at the same time it can help you protect the complete system operation from a potential damage or shutdown. So the way this operate is relatively simple. The embedded thermostat will sense the internal temperature of the device via a mechanical interface in a metal plate where the power switching device is mounted. So generally the power switching device on the SSR is the component that will generate the larger amount of heat within this relay. So the closer you place this thermostat to this power switching device is the better. So if the heat exceeds the normal range, it will send a signal to the SSR to turn off the power. So basically the thermostat internally will cut off the control signal internally on the SSR and will shut it down. So when the internal temperature goes beyond the specified maximum, that's when this shutdown will occur. And then power will automatically will turn on again once the system has cooled down and it returns to the normal operating range. So Jesus, you talked earlier about, and we're talking about EMRs, that the cost of replacing those devices if they fail. So this would then help you reduce the operating cost of these systems by preventing them from failing in this situation for even an SSR, which is already going to be more robust. That is correct. I mean, there are many ways that you can protect an SSR, but sometimes even when you're not familiar with the design, you might not be able to size properly the thermal requirements of the system. So an SSR that is thermal protected can be used as part of the normal system, or it can also be used as a validation or proof of concept for your system, just to make sure that you're sizing everything correctly. Okay, so this the thermostat, it's a very good way to protect an SSR, but there are certain limitations for this approach. And one of them is that the temperature threshold is fixed. So it will be dependent on the conditions of the specific application. What this means is that depending on where you're using the SSR, the threshold on the thermostat that is internally used on the SSR might be different. This is complicated to properly adjust when you have several different applications or when you're trying to go to several different customers using this type of device. So this is why we have developed other thermally protected SSRs that have a built-in functionality that use more precise temperature sensors along with a microcontroller-based circuit. So in addition to the over-temperature protection, these SSRs also can include an alarm output which can be used to send a signal to the control system. So this is a more complete solution. It doesn't only shut down your SSR if uh, the temperature starts climbing up, it also sends you a signal so you can check your system and see what is wrong with it. 
So in addition to this, some devices also might include an embedded circuit that can control a fan to extend the current handling capability of the SSR. We mentioned before that generally you use a heatsink to properly dissipate the heat of the SSR. But if you use external force air, you can actually extend even further the capability of this Solister relay. So this is basically the principle that is being used here. You attach a fan to the SSR. In this case, the internal temperature measurement is used to basically monitor at which point you need to activate this fan and that allows the SSR to manage a higher current, but you will maintain a certain size. So this type of control circuit can maximize the life of the fan since it will only be turned on when necessary, based on the internal temperature of the solid state relay. So is the temperature of these alarms and the pre-alarms, is that set by like a digital code through some kind of peripheral interface, or is it a different part number for different temperatures? No, in this case, that's based on the design of the SSR. So basically, during the design, we determine what are the temperature limits that are adequate for the SSR to be operating. And based on that, there is a code that is programmed on the SSR to tell you, okay, when you're reaching this, you're getting close to the permissible limits. So you start sending the pre-alarm. And that way you can tell the user, okay, the, the SSR is heating more than it should. When it reaches the alarm level, it sends an actual alarm signal. So you can do an action over it and it, it shuts down the SSR so it stops overheating. Gotcha. And you mentioned earlier in this presentation that unlike the hard drives, you're not shrinking your SSRs a lot relative to the, the older EMRs, but you are putting a lot more capability into them. Yes, that's right. That's right. And, and actually, the fan is one way to actually make the SSR a little bit more compact while extending the current capability. The drawback on that is that it adds some cost to the SSR because you're adding the fan, but it helps you to maintain a certain size on the device and extend your current handling capability. So as semiconductors starts uh, evolving and are more efficient, they will generate less heat and that will allow us to make smaller SSRs eventually. And that will come a little bit more similar to electromechanical relays in terms of the size. So the following are just a couple of examples where Sensata has implemented this type of smart thermal protection capability. So one of them is the DRH series. The DRH series are a compact IEC style three phase solid state contactors. These are very similar in package to some uh, electromechanical conductors you will find in many control cabinets. These are just 45 millimeters wide. So the thing with these devices, if you see the side of them, is that they have a small integrated fan. And that allows them to reach up to 20 amps in a very compact package. If you don't have this fan, the maximum current that you can reach in these devices is somewhere around 8 amps. So that's the difference that the fan makes in this case. And the internal temperature sensing is basically what allows us to use the fan here because it monitors the temperature operation and the fan operates only when needed and basically prevents us from using the SSR beyond its limits. Another type of product that was launched in the last few years and that has this type of capability are the PM67 and the R67 series, which are three-phase solid-state relays. We have them in panel mount and the in-rail mount styles. These are 675 millimeter wide solid-state relays. And for these families, we offer an option with the over-temperature protection. You will find them in our catalog under the TA suffix. And there are also some models that have an integrated font similar to what you will find on the DRH that allows the SSR to reach a very high current, in this case, 75 amps per phase while maintaining the same width. So without the fan, for example, in this case, this relays can reach probably 30 amps per phase, but with the fan, the capability can be extended up to 75 amps. And that is possible only because we integrate the temperature sensing and control circuit on the solid state relays. So this may be a pretty fundamental question that will be obvious to people that are experienced with this, but, but for those that might not be, what's the difference between a contactor and a relay? 
In reality, there is not much difference. It's more a terminology that it's been using for many years. Generally, contactors are more referred like through three-phase type of devices, but in essence, they are all relays. So you might find them a little bit uh, interchangeable. So in summary, these are some of the benefits that you will find on thermally protected SSRs. So first, in addition to preventing overheating, the integrated thermal protection can also help you to troubleshoot some design issues in your system. So it can help you to identify the correct heat sinking capability in the SSR or in your system because poor installation can result in efficient heat dissipation and many other issues. So this is a very valuable tool to the engineer that is responsible for the system operations. So basically the SSR can help you during the design concept. So there might be some cases where you might want to use a thermally protected SSR during the design and proof of concept phase. And then afterwards, you might want to go with uh, standard SSRs when you have fully validated your system. Another thing is that this advanced type of SSR design can be used in many systems to provide great benefits. For example, consider a conveyor belt application where a motor can be stuck and then can cause an overload. So basically, when a motor gets overload, it will draw more current, and this can potentially damage your system. So in this case, the SSR with the thermal protection can help this from preventing, because once the motor is drawing more current, this might reach a point where it exceeds the capability of the SSR, and it will start overheating. So if the SSR detects this condition, it can shut itself down, and it tells you that there is something wrong with your system. Also, you can find a uh, great benefit in injection molding applications where the space is very limited, and this can cause the temperature in the cabinet to rise if it is not managed properly. So the thermal protection can prevent the SSR from overheating if the heat management is not adequate, and then it can avoid costly repairs on your system. For heating systems, the thermal protected SSRs can help you to shut down the heating elements if there is a problem with the temperature controller that can cause the temperature to run away and thereby can help you to protect the entire system. You know, Jesus, that first bullet point here you have about using it for troubleshooting design, it's really a clever application that I don't think I would have thought of my own, of using that capability inside this thing to make sure that your entire system is running at the temperature that you think it is, because it's pretty hard to get a temperature sensor into the systems where that heat's being generated. So by having it there as part of the system and allowing that to help your troubleshooting, debug, and design is a really clever use of the technology. Yes, because actually sometimes you might not see the problems until you have the system fully running. So at the beginning, you might think that everything's fine, but now it is running full operation. You might find that the SSR heatsink was not sized properly. So there might be some applications where you might want to have this type of protection all the time because they are costly equipments where you certainly cannot have any type of time down. But there are other applications, as I mentioned here, where you might only use it during the design concept. And once you find that everything is sized properly, you can maybe move to a standard SSR, making sure that everything was designed as it should. Yeah, and running above the temperature limits is not necessarily going to be a hard failure. So it might be something that you see in reduced lifetime, and then it's returns and recalls and those kind of things. So it could be a pretty costly thing down the stream, even if it's not a hard failure right in your lab. That is correct. Using SSRs, if they are used properly, they can basically last forever. I mean, we have seen SSRs in the field for more than 20 years. If used properly, they can last 20 million cycles, even more than that. Mm. But if they are not used properly, you are right. I mean, you can find complete failure of the relays, but you can also find a degradation of the product and where the life expectancy is actually decreased significantly. So if the SSR might work for you for more than 20 years, maybe it will last 10 years or maybe less if you didn't size it properly. So that's a very valid point. Before we wrap up our tech chat today, Jesus, are there any other messages or key takeaways you'd like to pass on to our audience? Yeah, thank you for asking, Dale. So we at Sensata, we offer a very broad range of solace relays. So you can just go to our website to sensata.com and you can find our full range of 
Crichton branded Solister relays. And you can always direct any question to us. We have a very experienced staff of uh, application engineers and design engineers that can help you with any application you will have. Well, that's excellent. Thank you, Jesus. It's been great having you join us on this tech chat sponsored by Mauser Electronics. Thank you for inviting me. And if you're looking to purchase any of these Sensata solid state relays, please head over to mauser.com and thank them for supporting educational presentations like this. And join us again next time on Tech Chat, where we chat with the leading technical experts like Jesus Miranda from world-leading innovators like Sensata who are changing our world every day.